In this video, we will uncover how Starlink will dominate the satellite internet industry, explore the disadvantages of a Starlink mega constellation, and understand how Starlink could reduce global wealth disparity. With that said, our dedicated team here at Nanalyze has researched, written, and curated hundreds of in-depth articles on everything from quantum computing to space exploration. The Nanalyze article, The Global Impact of Cheap Satellites and Launches, was the inspiration for this very video. If you would like to support Nanalyze and support these videos directly, then please click the first link in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. It's very much appreciated. Also check out our free newsletter linked below. During an interview with Bloomberg in January 2015, visionary entrepreneur Elon Musk hinted at his latest idea, creating a global communication system that would be larger than anything that has been talked about to date. Fast forward just over eight years, this extraordinary concept has become a concrete reality, bearing the name Starlink. Since Starlink's maiden launch in May 2019, aboard the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle, the constellation has grown to over 3,580 satellites orbiting Earth providing high-speed, low-latency internet to North and South America, Europe, Oceania, and Far East Asia. As the Starlink network expands over the coming decade, it will comprise of 42,000 satellites servicing the entire globe, becoming humanity's first low-Earth orbit, or LEO, mega constellation. Falcon 9 currently launches 60 version 1.5 satellites into orbit per Starlink mission, which have a unit cost of $250,000, a mass of 300 kilograms, and a final operational altitude of 530 to 550 kilometers above Earth. The UK-based global communications company OneWeb is also exploring the viability of satellite internet, with their constellation comprising of 648 satellites, which have a unit cost of $1.2 million a mass of 150 kilograms, and a final operational altitude of 1,200 kilometers above Earth. It's important to note that Starlink and OneWeb are not in direct competition, as Starlink is targeted towards individuals in remote regions, whereas OneWeb is geared towards commercial clients. OneWeb operates fewer satellites than Starlink, therefore they orbit at a much higher altitude in order to maintain maximum coverage. Although fewer satellites are required at higher altitudes, the latency increases the further away you move from the Earth's surface. Latency is the time it takes for packets of data to be transferred between two points. OneWeb has a latency of 32 milliseconds, Starlink has a latency of 25 milliseconds, and geostationary, or GEO, satellites, which operate at almost 36,000 kilometers above Earth, have a latency of 240 milliseconds. The greater the latency, the longer it takes for web pages to load and online video to play. Slight variations in latency will not affect your average consumer. However, the financial industry is dependent on extremely low latency connections for executing trades between the New York and London stock exchanges. This is why we currently have a fiber optic undersea cable spanning the Atlantic Ocean, connecting the two economic hubs. An orbiting satellite transfers data at the speed of light, or 300,000 kilometers per second, whereas a fiber optic cable transfers data at only 100,000 kilometers per second. We could potentially see satellites replacing undersea fiber optic cables in the near future. However, it's imperative that the connection from ground-based receivers to computer terminals also allows for high-speed data throughput. It's certain fiber optics will continue to play an integral role in the future of internet infrastructure. Amazon's Project Kuiper, China's Geespace, Viasat and Telesat also participate in the satellite internet revolution, with constellations comprising of various small and large satellites operating at different altitudes. What sets Starlink apart from the competition is its internal satellite deployment method and vertically integrated supply chain. Unlike the competition, Starlink is a SpaceX subsidiary which has access to the Falcon 9 rocket, which costs $2,938 to launch one kilogram into LEO. Prior to the Russo-Ukrainian conflict, 
OneWeb could launch aboard the Soyuz rocket, which cost $6,075 to launch one kilogram into LEO. OneWeb now launches aboard the Falcon 9 and the Indian Space Agency's launch vehicle Mark III, which costs $7,875 to launch one kilogram into LEO. Due to the Falcon 9's greater payload capacity, rapid reusability, and lower per kilogram launch cost, SpaceX can launch a larger number of Starlink satellites more frequently and for less than the competition. With over 51% of all operational satellites orbiting Earth belonging to SpaceX, and over 1 million active subscribers on the Starlink network, SpaceX gathers more user data than any other company. With this unique data advantage, SpaceX engineers can easily innovate and implement improvements far quicker than the competition. Rapid reusability and heavy lift launch vehicles are the cornerstone of modern aeronautics, serving as an ideal solution for launching a satellite mega constellation. Although impressive, problems begin to arise as you launch more mass into orbit. There are an estimated 36,500 objects larger than 10 centimeters and 130 million objects between one millimeter and one centimeter, hurtling around Earth at over 28,000 kilometers per hour. If two objects were to collide in orbit, they would obliterate each other, forming a cloud of debris consisting of thousands of smaller objects. If we allow this destructive cycle to continue, our planet will be encapsulated by a lethal swarm of orbital debris, forever preventing us from traveling among the stars. This is known as Kessler syndrome. Starlink satellites have an operational lifespan of five years, can be deorbited and burnt up in Earth's atmosphere within a matter of weeks, and uses an onboard collision avoidance system to autonomously maneuver away from orbital debris. These attributes enable Starlink to mitigate the continuation of the Kessler syndrome. However, no system is 100% perfect. Along with the orbital debris dilemma, Starlink also poses a threat to the future of astrophotography and astronomy. From observing distant galaxies to monitoring near-Earth asteroids, these industries are paramount for the preservation of the human species and the pursuit of knowledge. Unfortunately, the Starlink mega constellation is interrupting observations, with Starlink trains appearing as streaks of bright light, ruining photographs. SpaceX has attempted to reduce the disruption caused by altering flight configurations to make satellites less visible, utilizing dielectric mirrors to reflect light away from Earth, and applying low reflectivity black paint to Starlink surfaces. Even though these techniques do somewhat reduce the visibility of Starlink satellites against the night sky, it's unlikely these solutions will scale as the constellation grows. As of 2023, 37% of the global population, or approximately 2.96 billion individuals, live without an internet connection. The wealthy principality of Monaco has the world's fastest average internet, with speeds of 261.82 megabits per second, whilst the country of Turkmenistan has the world's slowest internet speeds of just 0.77 megabits per second. Starlink aims to provide an average internet speed of between 50 and 250 megabits per second to all of humanity. With these speeds, residents of third world nations can consume video content on YouTube, learning new skills, participate in online shopping through Amazon, acquiring new goods and technology, and communicate via WhatsApp, sharing new ideas. The internet has had a transformative impact on the developed world. Just imagine the profound positive impact it can have on the developing one. Before the coronavirus pandemic, 17% of US employees worked from home, five or more days per week. This increased to 44% during the pandemic. By adopting this new work from home and hybrid lifestyle, people from developing countries can access higher paying jobs only available in Western economies, eventually eliminating financial inequality. We would like to know your thoughts. Will Starlink be too detrimental to astronomy to fully build out the mega constellation, or should the Starlink constellation exist 
to help those in poverty-stricken nations thrive financially? Let us know in the comments below. With that said, if you would like to support Nanalyze and gain access to hundreds of premium articles, then please click the first link in the description box below. Also check out our free newsletter linked below. Thank you for your support and feel free to check out the video on screen now as it contains an exceedingly powerful message which will assist you on your investing journey.